Yes, the title is not clickbait. So I'm just gonna dive straight into it. I realized out of all the solar videos, one thing nobody ever talks about, and I never realized until recently, inflation. The cost to generate and produce electricity will always go up. This means when you need electricity to use from your provider, it'll cost more to use year after year. And I never realized that. Having said that, I already did a video where I talked about the potential changes with solar in California early last year. However, now these changes are finally being put into place in just a month or so, April to be exact. So first we'll talk about that. If you guys know everything about that, you can go ahead and skip ahead in the chapters below. And after I'm gonna be talking about whether I think Tesla Solar is worth it and if I have any regrets three years later. Did anything break? Any quality control issues? How's the cost versus how much I'm saving? But first, let's start with the term net energy metering or NEM. What does this mean? So when the sun creates energy using your solar panels, you use some of that energy right away instantly. So say the sun is creating 10 kilowatts of energy right now, but your house is only using seven kilowatts of energy. This means that three kilowatt hours goes back to your utility provider. Now, right now the plan all of us solar people are in is called NEM 2.0. So let's say that three kilowatt hours you give back to say SoCal Edison will be credited back to you at 30 cents per kilowatt hour. However, after April 14th, 2023, this credit will decrease from 30 cents to only eight cents, which is nothing. This makes it so solar doesn't really seem worth it anymore for the most part. Especially if you pay so much for a system, most people expect to break even within five to 10 years. However, if you're not getting that much credit to use, this means it's gonna take much longer to break even. With that and the increasing rates of electricity every year, it's really not looking good for solar. Why they're doing this, I don't know, but from the movies, it always comes to money and corporate greed. So why would someone wanna get solar in the first place? Now, the one big question we all have when we get an electric car is how much higher is our electricity bill gonna be after? Because honestly, this is why most people like myself considered solar in the first place. Before our average utility bill was hovering around $200 a month, which I realized after seeing other people's comments from my previous videos isn't that high, but it does add up every month. However, now because we charge our Tesla Model Y at home now, it honestly made sense to go solar. But how much extra does it cost to charge? Now, this number is gonna be different with everyone, but let's just say you commute 50 miles to and from work every day. Our starting charge rate is gonna be 80%, but in this case, it's gonna be 81%. We'll be driving the Model Y long range with 19 inch wheels and temperatures are just normal, nothing crazy. On average, we arrive home with 56% battery charge. We then charge the car back to 80% every day and it consumes 18 kilowatt hours to charge. Again, I get this question asked a lot, but you do not have to charge your Tesla every day. In fact, it's a good idea to let your battery go to sleep at different states of charge to help calibrate the high voltage battery. But regardless, we will always be charging to 80%, if not today, tomorrow. So if the rate of charging an electric car during off-peak times is 22 cents per kilowatt hour, this means it costs about $20 for five days of charging, which honestly isn't bad. But remember, you have to charge your car during off-peak times. I have so many videos on how to set up your charging, so check one of those out. And if you didn't know, a few terms to be familiar with is mid-peak, off-peak, and super off-peak. Mid-peak is when most people are home and using energy the most from 4 to 9 p.m. And this is the most expensive plan. Off-peak is from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Super off-peak is when we generate the most energy between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's also when most of us aren't home, so most of that excessive energy does go back to the grid. And it usually happens when the rates are the cheapest. However, if you're on a certain rate plan with electric vehicles, off-peak and super off-peak have the same price, and they just jack up your mid-peak prices like crazy. But generating energy and it going back to the grid makes it so having a high net energy metering cost credit so important. It also makes it so having a power wall is even more important, but I'll get into that in a second. Now, honestly, my SCE utility bill is the most confusing thing ever, but if you live in Orange County and your bill has gone up, look into your generation charges as they switched everyone to a third party called Orange County Power Authority 
which is supposed to generate cleaner energy for you, but at a cost. You can easily opt out online, which is what we did. So first for the month of January, my bill was $400. Honestly, this is the craziest it's ever been, even with solar. But for some reason, when I look at the electricity bill, they did charge our last month generation charge from December in January, which is weird. Honestly, with inflation and price hikes, I have no idea what's going on. Also, wintertime does mean less sun. And as you can see, I only generated 136 kilowatts in January, which isn't much. Now looking at my Tesla app, even on the sunniest of days in July, I generated about 744 kilowatt hours of energy in a month. The Tesla app does a great job of letting you know how much energy you're producing. However, one thing you can see is how much energy you're consuming at home, unless you have a power wall, as that kind of links everything together. So what is a power wall? A power wall is pretty much a giant battery that stores any excessive energy you produce for your home. I feel like this question has been asked so many times because everyone wants to know if a power wall is worth it because the cost of a power wall is so high. I mean, it costs as much as an entire new four kilowatt system. However, there are a few factors, like it depends on where you live. In our case, if the cost of usage for mid peak times is very high, it may be worth it. Also, if you are gonna be purchasing solar later, the new NEM 3.0 plan, it's definitely worth it to get the power wall. That way you can store all the excessive energy for you to use yourself instead of it going back to your utility provider, giving you like no credit. Also, if you live in an area prone to natural disasters like blackouts, it definitely is worth it. Regardless of the price, I do feel like it's worth it more than ever now because of that new NEM system. And the electricity rates continue to rise, making it honestly so you don't get enough bang for your buck with regular solar. The only way is to have that battery to store all the excessive energy you're using, as well as you being able to use that energy when your rates are the highest. And that's my first regret not getting a power wall. I mean, it does suck that it is a battery, so there is a lifespan to it, but I also do think it depends on how much you use it. Next, let's talk about savings. And my second regret was not getting a bigger system. Now, right away, when you are generating with solar, with my utility provider, we get switched to the pay at the end of the year plan, which is like how most people are, because a lot of people don't really have to pay every month since they most likely generate more than they use. However, there still are certain payments that are due every month, like to deliver the electricity. For instance, my first month of having solar, we only had to pay $21. However, if you look, we still used $62 worth of energy, but the bill isn't due to the end of the year. So at the end of 2022, on top of the monthly charges, we still owed about $1,200. Now this was the time we just got our Model Y as well, but we didn't have it that whole year. Now again, like I said before, with inflation, rates are always changing. So the cost of electricity has definitely gone up since we got solar. And now since we automatically got switched to this weird cleaner energy generation thing, our bill has gone up by a lot. We also switched from paying that lump sum at the end of the year to paying monthly, so already in January and February, we paid $231 and $401, which is a lot. Now we recently did get a Model X in December, but I only charge maybe once a week at most. So I'm not sure why our bill was so high. But the fact that we did get another electric car leads me to that regret of not getting a bigger system. Now, back then when I ordered Tesla Solar, the solar configurator was a little bit different. And when I did configure our system with our utility bill, we would break even or just pay a little bit every month. However, again, with the rising cost of electricity, as well as the potential future EV cars, like getting another electric car, this means our demands for electricity have gone up by a lot. So pretty much our solar production isn't gonna cut it anymore. Back then we got a 4.08 kilowatt system and it cost us $8,200 before incentives. So we ended up paying maybe around $6,000 for our system. However, now the minimum system you can get from Tesla is 4.8 kilowatts, which costs $13,000 before the 30% federal tax credit which still costs around $9,000. Overall, it's not too bad. And again, Tesla Solar is the cheapest around. So if you guys are considering Tesla Solar and you wanna check it out, make sure you guys use the link in my description because I know so many people who was just trying to test it out and they ended up purchasing solar, but they forgot to use a referral code and it was just a hassle to kind of fix all those stuff. Now before with the Tesla referral code, you were able to get money back. 
However, now they changed everything and you can get credit for the Tesla store, which is still honestly better than nothing because you can apply it to like a charging system or something like that. So when you are configuring your system, all you have to do is input your address as well as your average utility bill and see how much it's gonna cost. In the buying process, they have a savings calculator over 25 years with solar. They also added the average price electricity increasing 2% annually, which I didn't even think about at the time. So honestly, I wish I purchased a six or eight kilowatt system back then when it was much cheaper. But when you are considering solar, instead of using the online calculator, I do recommend taking a look at your bill for the previous year and how many total kilowatt hours you consumed. From there, I mean, again, it's always changing, but let's say it takes 20 kilowatt hours to charge your Tesla every day. That alone is 7,300 kilowatt hours of electricity for the year just for one EV car. This means already a four kilowatt system is barely gonna cut your charging needs alone, which means you need a bigger system. Since a 4.8 kilowatt system only generates about 7,200 kilowatt hours of energy a year. Again, this is just charging a car 30% every single day, which most people do not. But keep in mind, Charging electric car does take a lot of juice. If you do purchase solar, they do have loans as well where you can rent the solar panels, which I definitely don't recommend. And when purchasing Tesla solar, they love to use Google images for an assessment. Like for me with the updated configurator, when they assessed my house, I think they thought my roof was really small and they said the max system I can install is four kilowatts. But when you actually look at my roof, I could definitely install more panels. I do go into this in my first Tesla solar video, but the cheap prices do come with bad customer service. I don't know how it is now three years later. However, back then it was impossible to contact the Tesla solar sales team. And when I first purchased solar, they automatically canceled my order because based on Google images, I had an incompatible roof type. And I knew that wasn't true because my neighbor just installed Tesla solar. So it took me forever to get a hold of someone for them to come physically to my house to verify that my roof was compatible. Also, they don't really follow up, so you have to contact them with any issues. But I mean, it's a hit or miss. However, you do get the cheapest solar around. Overall, 90% of our neighbors have Tesla solar and they don't really have any regrets after installation. It's just everything leading up to the installation that was a headache. I'm hoping it gets better, but who knows? So three years later, here we are with zero issues. The panels do its own thing, they take in the sun, transfer to energy, and that's about it. Regardless, right now, every day Jan and I are on the fence of purchasing another four kilowatt system for Tesla, or going with a third party solar company to install a power wall, which they also do. We honestly still aren't sure what we're gonna do, but I'm hoping because we opted out of that clean energy generation thing, our prices will eventually go back down to normal. But having a super thick Stormbreaker Model X charging at home as well, I don't know, man, it's not looking good. Anyways, guys, hope that video helped you. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have Tesla Solar and what your experience is. Again, if you guys are considering solar, use my referral link for those credits, and I'll see you guys next time.